All right, welcome painters. We're starting our portrait painting and some of you had already started and some of you needed some instructions. So um, here I am on video to help you kind of along with your portrait painting. First step is to find a, a portrait picture that you like. Now, um, I am putting it out there to find a picture of a family or friend that you've taken or a friend of yours has taken is fine with me, as long as you have permission from the photographer to use the photo. Um, find something that is well lit and um, something that where you can see. If you've got a group shot and you zoomed way in to a person in the background and want to do that, a lot of times that has low resolution and it's difficult to find the details. You kind of want to be able to have a photo where you can kind of see um, maybe the different shades of color in your eyes um, and things like that. Sometimes you can see that, sometimes maybe not in this picture is, is a little bit fuzzy, but you can kind of pick up some changes in value in the eyes and, and in the face. So those are things that you want to do. Find a well-lit photo. Um, perhaps if you're taking a, a picture of a family member, um, have them stand kind of by uh, natural lighting by a window. If you have something that's contrast, let's say there's a little shadow over here and a little brighter over here, that kind of can be a nice um, contrast and it makes it for an interesting um, portrait. Now, um, so once you've got your photo taken, send it to me and I will Photoshop on this grid. Um, I may do a little bit of cropping just so that your, your subject um, fills the, um, the page proportionately, as well as we're going to um, have this photo uh, in proportion with the canvas. So I've gridded this out six boxes so these are six one inch squares and eight one inch squares six by eight and that matches our canvas which is 12 by 16. so there will be six boxes across and eight boxes down just like this and then we'll follow that grid so let me show you how to draw the grid onto your canvas it's going to be two inch two inch grid and so on the short end i'm going to Mark off two, four, six, eight, ten with a light pencil. Keep your lines light as you will be wanting to paint over them and you don't want them to show through. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Do it on both ends and then line up your little marks that you made and draw those light lines. Gridding is a very uh, good way professional artists do it as well, especially with a portrait where you're trying to get a good likeness. It's easy to get when you're just doing things freehand to be just off just a hair and find that it you lose the likeness in that way a lot of times. All right, so also do the same thing on the long end. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 marks. And on the other side, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And then line those little marks off. So you've put marks on both sides of the canvas and you're lining them up and drawing them out. And then from there, this grid is an enlarged version of your six by eight version. So you'll start by finding where third box down, third box over. Um, you can very easily then look at the proportions of, of things in the boxes, second box over, kind of figure out where hairline is and things like that. I would suggest when you begin is to kind of create the head and shoulders and some of those lines, outlines, hairline, and things like that onto your canvas, and then begin to add in your um, details. So in oftentimes when I do this with my portrait drawers in my drawing class, is I'll have them grid the grid. So when you get into some more of those fine details and placement, you'll put a little square, maybe have these, have these to kind of figure out where things lie and how large they are compared to that box. And so then you'll put in your eye 
and your brow and things like that and begin to develop the details. All right, so that's gridding the grid. Now, um, then you're going to be going to your paint. Now, one thing I want to mention about the paint that you will have, um, keep those um, containers kind of sealed well. Um, maybe even put them in a plastic bag just to kind of keep them fresh and long lasting for you. Perhaps use a paper plate. Um, I didn't give you pallets to use, but use some sort of a lid or a paper plate. Wrap that up so that anything that you've mixed you can um, reuse and keep using. Um, small quantities do tend to dry out some. Um, and so kind of keep those hopefully maybe as we move forward we'll have another opportunity to get more paint I did put kind of a limited amount of white that was one, something I was short of and so um, and that's something that we use the most of so kind of be thinking about that be conservative just get small quantities at first if you're doing the whole background at you come to that point and you want to use a lot of paint you might want to mix a couple mix a larger quantity but kind of be conservative with what you use all right so now if you're wanting to match a color and kind of trying to find the different values in your um, paint scheme here you can um, use something like a card so this is just a basically a blank piece of paper that I've punched a hole in and so if I'm looking to try to match a color that I have made I can um, kind of work with it a little bit okay and find the match there and kind of come up with that value. Now these are the colors I use for a skin tone. I gave you kind of a caramely brown and a white and that actually works pretty well for a skin tone. It's just a little bit yellow. This this one I have here is kind of a, a little bit more of a yellower bat brown and there's some browns that have a little bit more red. So you can, you can actually add just a touch of the red to it to kind of rosy up the color. Oftentimes when I'm painting, I will um, have the value that I need kind of in the center and then I'll have a lighter version here and a little bit darker version there. So I'm kind of working with those three colors uh, or values or even more dabbing in just a little bit of white to lighten as I work along and creating my portrait. Now, one little note on blending. Um, you're going to want to blend sometimes, and I have had some students wonder, you know, how do I get these colors? I've got a tone here and a tone there. And sometimes if you step back, that looks okay. But if you're looking to blend a little bit, add just a smidge of water. So let's say I've got a little skin tone here, and it's a little bit darker, and it's, and then, but I want it darker here, and then maybe slightly lighter here and I want to blend that, you can easily just add just a touch of water, add your lighter color up here, add, add a little water, and while they're both wet, you can kind of blend them together. Also remember with acrylic paints, you can paint over paint. So if you've kind of made a mess of it in one area, um, one, you can wipe it away while it's still fresh or let it dry, come back over with some of the details that you're looking for. Um, let's see. Um, and don't forget also to continually rinse out your brushes thoroughly. You will find that sometimes if acrylic um, paint has um, uh, dried on there, your brush is not as nice as it used to be. So one little tip for your home, if you have anything like um, Murphy's Oil Soap, or I use um, Awesome, which is kind of similar to 409, soak it in those um, one of those overnight, and that should loosen up the paint enough for you to kind of clean it out again. All right, so hopefully these are some tips that will help you get started. I'm excited to see your progress. Be sure to put some questions that you may run into in the comments and um, we'll uh, give you more instruction as needed. Happy painting!